Hi, we're Ian and Julie. Follow us on our tiny homestead and our debt-free project of a lifetime, the building of our shipping container home here in the Pyrenees, and all of this alongside our full-time jobs. Welcome back to the French Pyrenees. I'm Ian and Julie will be here in a minute. And she's my wife and we are building this off-grid property here in the French Pyrenees, starting off with the garage which we have now near enough 95% completed, but we have a small project on the rear of the garage to form a small um, lean-to basically to house this machinery and to clear out my garage so I can start working on projects. First project today is, if you've seen in the previous videos, are the skid steer tracks. Now I've had a problem, I've got some stones stuck in there and uh, basically just tried to get them out by going backwards and forwards. And that's damaged the little nipples inside, the little guides that hold it onto the, uh, the guide wheel. So on the one track, which is the other side, it has come off six times now while I've been working. So I bought some new tracks, uh, bought them locally, well locally, bought them on the internet, but they came from France. Um, they look a bit sturdier, they look a different design. Um, they've got a wider guide inside, so I'm hoping that will um, not just keep popping off all the time. And uh, quite a sturdier sort of rubber track. And we'll get this going because I've got to get some more turf off for the bottom of the driveway here um, to make that nice and level before we get the gravel in. First things first, there's always an issue before we can actually start any project, of course. Um, last week, when I was backing the skid steer in, I drove over the plug to the compressor and I want to use the compressor just to use the uh, to blow out any of the dirt or anything. I don't want to start washing it just before I put it into the garage. Uh, I'm going to blow out all the dirt, but before I can do that, I've got to repair the damage I caused with the skid steer. So I've just got to put on a new plug, which is a bit of a, a pain, but luckily I do have a spare plug. So I'll get that plug on, get this compressor going and then clean out the skid steer, take out the mini digger, and uh, get some space in here to bring those other tracks in. Now the big problem I have, it's at an angle, so it tends to slip a little bit. If I can get this up as high as I can, I've just uh, ground out this little bottle jack, just so it's got a, a groove for this to sit on. but I've got to get it high enough to get that little wheel just here off the ground enough um, so the actual guides will drop below it. Oh, it's much easier in the garage than in the field. So this is a 27 millimeter socket. I brought one up here as just purely for this machine now, instead of bringing all my tools up. And this does have movement here, up and down. So if you get it in the center, you just don't lose it when you try and put it back in. There we go. Ah, should have come out on the socket. Right, this is where it gets a bit messy. So rags and paper towel. So this is just like a big grease nipple. You can see there's a grease nipple here where you fill it and it basically comes through straight in and pushes this piston, which is, um, where is it? On this wheel here. So the piston is on the front wheel. The back wheel, I don't know whether you can see it there, is the motor. 
there we go it pushes out and all that grease you can see is coming out here Pretty heavy for a bit of rubber. There we go. And you can see all the damage where the rocks have hit it. And then I've tried to get it back on. And it's basically just caught the edge of these wheels. God, that's quite stiff. I'd like to say that's not that well aligned. That looks like it's bent as well. Maybe that's half my problem. Right, I'm gonna take that wheel off. Just taking this wheel off. Just have a good look at it. Hmm, that tap through. Yeah. So that's on bearings, but uh, I'm not sure whether that has bent there. I just had to bring this back to my workshop at home. Um, basically, these bolts here are bent. Um, this is the, the center shaft and they just look all bent so trying to get those are quite difficult so I've got some replacement just with a, uh, a bolt bolt head just going to reassemble this the tightness is coming from the actual seal which is probably a good thing so I'm just going to tap that down a bit seems okay So I'll take this back up to the plot now and carry on with the uh, track change. Fourteen pounds heavier. One year since I basically last cycled, I am feeling it. But I've only got four or five weeks before our uh, work season starts where I sort of should be on the bike um, guiding. I should be really on the bike, but this building lock, <laughs> this project with the garage and the house just takes all of your time. And you feel guilty when you jump on your bike for an hour or two. Um, phew, one hour is killing me. Um, I just did a, a slightly hilly route, cramping my left calf, my right knee went. So um, yeah, I'm going to take it steady, take it easy, but uh, it's nice to be on the bike. Beautiful weather, 27 degrees and uh, it's six o'clock at night. It's supposed to be a really nice uh, week, so I'm going to try and take advantage of that. Work on the project, work on the garage, fencing, the add-on to the garage, all of that stuff in the day and try and get out for a, an hour or two in the evening. Right, got 3k left to get back to Julie and uh, get some tea. I'm back down here on the plot tomorrow morning. Back in the plot. See, there's quite a bit of a gap there. I'm just wondering whether I put a washer or something. Oh, 
I think maybe I put a washer inside there to split it out. I might do. Got to fix it, haven't I? falling on you. So I thought it was going to be basically a measuring job of trying to explain it to the supplier of what track I needed and then they were just going to laugh at me because this is a Chinese made machine but in fact it's just like buying a tyre for your car. This marking here 180 times 72 times uh, what does it say 37 upside down um, the 180 is the width of the track. So this measurement here, that's 180 millimeters. The 72 is the distance between the peak of these two, uh, I call them nipples, these guides. So that is 72 millimeters between there and there. And the 37 is how many of these so you have to count them one, two, three, four, all the way around, and that's 37. So that's how you order them. So here are my new tracks, came on a pallet, came within a couple of days, and on my new ones, I have 180 for the width, 72, I don't know what the K means, maybe that is this, this type of um, design, and then the 37. And when I ordered them, it was 37P, now the P, was because they came in a pair. Uh, I, I just made sure because they said, if you order the wrong ones, then it's your cost to get them shipped back. And uh, that would be pretty expensive. Free shipping. I mean, ooh, ridiculous, isn't it? We are at. There we go. That is the... Uh, one side of the piston. Before I put it on, they're pretty heavy. Oh, <laughs> Flex them muscles, right? Vulcan, the makers. And here's Pappy's little helper. Say bonjour, Tom. Say bonjour. No, too busy watching Pappy. Let's get this on. The other side is directly in line. You can see that, you can't because of the angle, but uh, I'm going to leave this one, I think, and it's moving nicely. This track hasn't come off. I'm going to leave it, but at least I know what to do in case they do come up. No, I know what to look for now. So uh, I'll put this next track on now because I've got work to do. This has delayed us a couple of days, but um, at least I know how to change tracks. Uh, tracks weren't too expensive, a couple of hundred euros for the pair. Um, as I said, free delivery. So parts for these Chinese machines are available. Uh, they're just so interchangeable, it doesn't really matter. So um, yeah, we'll get this back on the road, back on the field. 
um, today and I'm going to get some turf dug and put at the bottom of the drive. Meanwhile, we got to head off down to the, um, the polytunnel because I want to finish off that watering project. Uh, you saw that we had a really old battery there and um, yeah, it wasn't working at all. So we were going down with the, uh, the power supply unit. But that's pretty heavy for Julie to carry down the road. So uh, I'm going to get a new battery in there and uh, get that all going, hopefully all automatic and solar powered. just taking a few days off the off-grid build plot uh, we're back at our home base uh, where we run a business and we really do need to spend a week doing some maintenance here we built this decking just over 20 years ago and a couple of the major beams they've started to give way They've, there's a bit of rot so we've ripped it all out and over the course of this week we're hoping that we can rebuild this decking in time for our new cycling season to start. Come on, you noisy pups. There you go. Go on, go and find a mole. Go and find a mole, and you. Well, easy to bring it on the little trailer, but um, Julie mentioned last time that we didn't have any power from our solar off-grid water system, and we have to use the, uh, the power station that we bring. But I said uh, just earlier that it's quite heavy for Julie just to wander up the road with. So, Sanif Sanfu, battery manufacturer reached out to us and provided us with a 12.8 volt 100 amp hour battery um, it's a lipo battery i'm going to try it on this system and see how it all goes i'll uh, show you and end out the box in a little minute when i get it round into the field shelter but really happy for sanfu for sending us this just at the crucial moment that we actually need it for the polytunnel irrigation system the weather forecast for this weekend as of today, going through is 30 degrees. It's just ridiculous. And we've just opened the polytunnel. There we go. Oh, what have you done to your fly hood? Brought in some biscuits. But then, um, yeah, 30 degrees. And we've just opened the polytunnel and oh, we've had to come out, it's too hot. Another project that we should really look into is automating Tyson's water. It is in his stable back at our place, but here in the field, I've just got a, ooh, a tap at the back there and I turn it on. And all this water is captured from the rain. No mains water at all over here. It's been three weeks. I'm constantly brushing him with a hair remover brush, but oh, it's disgusting. He's a hairy beast. Again, I'd like to say thanks to Sanfu for sending us this 12 volt battery. It's a 12.8 battery, 100 amp hours, 1280 watt hours. So uh, nicely packed, came quite quickly as well. 
a bit of a beast. There's the battery itself. It also comes with a couple of um, insulated covers for the connectors. So I'll, I will use those now. So I'll take those in. And it also comes with some uh, crimped connector, copper crimps here. I've already got some on the, uh, the cables I have, so I'll keep those for later. So I'm just gonna take this in to the stable. Hopefully the horse will let me pass. Get these connected up and see how it goes. Come. Right, right, let's get this on. It's not too heavy actually, it's light, damn sight lighter than that uh, lead acid battery we've got. So there we go, I am going to connect him up. I'm hoping this little charge controller will work. If not, I'm going to um, invest in a bit better unit. So these are just screw connections. Phillips. Make sure I get the right polarity. That's my negative. And I'm just going to put on the cover. It slips over. So I'm just going to go and disconnect the pump just to make sure I can get all of this running before putting any um, load onto it. So this is my pump. I've got a 12 volt outlet just on the, the wall. So I've just disconnected it. So there's no load at all yet. Oh, are you back in? Goodness sake. It is warm today. Very warm. Right, let me get this on. I'll put the uh, insulating cap on. There's so many batteries on their website of differing sizes as well. So if I was to use this up at the uh, off-grid plot for our solar system, it's a 48 volt solar system. So I just need three more of these, so that'd be four in total. And I would just put them in series to get the, uh, the 48 volt. And uh, that would work perfectly connected to the inverter I'm gonna be putting up at the garage. So um, if this works out great, I'll invest in these, they're not too bad a price. Check out the website. I'll stick the links in the description to their website. Um, but let's see if it's going to go for it. Right, I've got 13 volts up on the charge controller. So that is good news. I've disconnected the solar panel for now because on this little unit, you're supposed to connect the battery first. So now I'll connect up the, uh, the solar panel. So that's just these two little spade connections it's all a bit heath robinson this but uh, it's been working really well for the last two years now except for that lead acid battery just died i'm going to go and check the load now so i'm going to put that pump back on and get the water back in the polytunnel and the polytunnel is absolutely roasting we left both doors shut for the last two days my God, the little tomato plants, you'll see. These poor little guys, look at him. So we'll get this water going. Just gonna plug him into the, the 12 volt socket. Right, I've turned the water off. So this pump only works when there's water required. So if, if it monitors the flow, this will turn on. So to time it, we just have a battery operated uh, timer. So of course that clicks open asks for flow, comes from the IBC units, through the pump, pump goes, yep, turn me on. And it needs that battery, that power of that LiPo 12.8 volt battery to give this energy. And um, yeah, it's been lacking for the last couple of months, of course, but uh, hoping all that's now changed. Like Julie showed you the other day, you stick him on hand and that gives us a uh, manual. It's just clicked and turn on the, the valve. There we go. The pump's now working. Let's go into this bone dry polytunnel again. Yeah, I can see it already. Spray it off now, come on. These blooming dogs. Spray it, Floki, come on, off. 
bit unfair, the dogs actually. Uh, we tell them to find this little visitor that has been eating all of the salad. And uh, I'll, I'll tell, you now, tell you now, it's like a, um, a very cute rat that lives underground. And it's either a Loire or a top. Now the Loires have got these massive big eyes that if you're about to clout them, they just look up to you like puss in boots and you just go, oh, here's a lettuce. You know, but the little tops, both our dogs are pretty much hunting dogs and they can rip those out of the ground and just tear them into pieces. And we've um, told them to do that in the polytunnel, but now we've planted all the polytunnel. We don't want them to touch the dirt. So yeah, it's a bit unfair that we keep telling them off. But really happy with that. We're gonna set the timer now, so it's not just on 60 minutes um, full. We'll set the timer and we'll monitor it over the next few days uh, just to see how that battery's working. Um, it should be fine. And uh, yeah, again, thanks for Sanfu for sending us that battery and uh, we'll let you know how it all goes. And there we go, all off until 12 hours, seven o'clock tomorrow morning.